Good morning, and welcome to another episode of... Role Play Moments Do you remember that moment where your players were just starting out? They were excited to see everything that you have planned, excited to explore the world, and we're happy to give that to them. Anders! If you look up, and it is Aaron Anders. It's gotta be. I stand and give him a little bow. So, light's, bre- light's blessing on you. Light's blessing on you. So, I heard you're going on an adventure. He looks around, are these your companions? It would seem so. These lucky gentlemen get to accompany me on my journey to being a cleric of Palar. Off to adventure! They seemed ready to take anything head on, and we wanted them to experience everything. Light's blessing on you. He doesn't say anything back. Light's blessing, friend. He doesn't hail. He rides Why closer. Does no one respond to that? Merit Everlight from the Citadel of the Sun. At your service. Nobody else likes saying their name. Okay. It's nice to meet you. I'm Merit Everlight. And What's I wasn't your name? talking to you. Hi. Now we're talking. It's good to meet new friends. And then something terrible happens. I'm going to take my sword and shove it through the base of his spine and up into his skull. I smite him. Smite! And smite, smite, smite. <laughs> All my take. notes. Oh, oh yay. Sad. Things take a turn for the worse. Your nice DM days are over. You've changed, and your players must change as well. And so the fight begins, and we have the power of the gods on our side. To let there be blood, let's go. This next scene is where I get to showcase my darker side as a DM. One of our players was unable to attend last session, so I decided to get my revenge. The players are prisoners and helpless. They're brought before the Duergar king that they betrayed, the same king that restored the paladin's missing leg in a previous session. I am King Trogoth the Hig. I want you all to witness what will happen to anyone that betrays me. First, I want you to know slaves are my property and they are mine to do with what I wish. He makes a motion with his hands and you see one guard walk up from the back of the room, come up next to him and present him a dagger. He takes the dagger out of his hand, wields it. He walks up to Nara and slices her throat. <laughs> one quick, swift motion across the throat. Before she even has a chance to jump or cry or flinch, her throat is spilt open and the blood starts dripping down her shirt and her body. You hear the... I scream, no! And cast healing word on her. So you see the wound start mending as the blood spilling down her body. And she's still like... And she stops. And Trolgoth looks and he's like, Feed him! And two guards step up and move behind you and they will attempt to grab you. Uh, I mean, I'm mad at cold, right? <laughs> Until you get advantage. And I have, I have eight strength. <laughs> and after 20 and a 16, hard. they grab your arms and they keep them solid and stop you from making any uh, motions. And one of them puts a dagger between your teeth. They force your mouth open. And they stick the dagger in. He looks down and he's like, If you move, I'm going to cut you. Uh-huh. And Trollgoth looks back. One guard grabs Nara. She's now sobbing and crying. Blood soaked into her shirt. And he does it again. <laughs> That's so fucked up. I'm sorry. <laughs> Right across the throat. He does it the same way, in the same spot. I told you. She is mine to do with what I will. 
Keep him gagged. As for you, he turns around and he looks at Dalaran. My brother, you killed him. My king died of a broken heart. I gave you that leg. I want it back. And when he says that, they shove him down on the stone bench. And he doesn't seem to struggle too much. Twists a little bit and they grab his leg. And one of the guards comes over and starts cutting with a jagged, sod blade. And the whole time, they have Delron's body held down against the stone. He starts screaming. He's like, <sighs> and it goes on for 30 seconds while they continue sawing and you can hear it and you can hear the muscles splitting apart and the bone starting to be sawed off until the leg is completely detached. The guard grabs the leg, unmanacles his feet, and tosses it to the side. And you hear the manacles hit the ground along with the leg. Thud! You hear the chains sliding across the stone. And for my king, give me his other leg. And at this point, he's not even struggling. You can see tears streaming down his face from the side. And they start cutting into the other leg. They take it off at the hip for another 30 seconds. He's still screaming, but it becomes muffled and painful. And Eventually, he passes out, stops screaming. And they take the second leg. They throw it off to the side. You still have the dagger in your mouth. The guard's holding onto it tight and you can feel it just cutting into the ends of your lips and your mouth. You can go back and tell your king in Riverstorm we will not be attending his summons. You can go back and tell him there will be no Deals. If he wants to send the emissary down to Grakthen Dalin, I will send him back in pieces. You go tell your king that. Now the players are broken. Um, staring at the wall, punching holes in it. With fireball? Occasionally. With fists? Occasionally. Um, it hurts. And I'm filling up my bucket. With poop? <laughs> You're to come with us. We're gonna lead you out of the river dark. And when we do, we're gonna go to the surface. We'll point you in the right direction. My tail loops under the handle of my bucket. And I drag it. Leave that there. It's mine. No, it's not. Taken so much from me. You have your life. You want to keep that? Maybe. You want my shit? No. Do you want this? You want and he life? reaches into his pocket and holds up your amulet. It swings like a pendulum. Fair trade. Do you want to die today? So you don't want this to be a trade? I don't really understand. You want me to leave this or no? Leave it. You want me to get that or no? Is your friend okay here? I don't think so. <laughs> Merit. What? Seeing uh, Put his it over friend. My neck. And I don't bring the bucket. You can keep it. He holds it up to you. I get my horn started. Come on. He moves it over the bucket uh -huh. and drops it. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Oh, 
I'm just gonna bring this with me then. <laughs> I drag the bucket now even more loudly. But he has his weapon drawn, <laughs> and he seems at attention. And they walk you out of the caverns until you get outside of the city. And Sasha is standing there. They walk you to. He's just taking his bucket of shit right in. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. The group moves through the river dart, through the underdart. You eventually come to a place. Just leave it on the road. <laughs> I throw the bucket. Quink, 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 quink. Maybe it's time to give them a little light and hope. Thank you very much, sir. You have a wonderful and blessed day. Alright. Sailor's Lord's light be with you. He points to your emblem. Sure. Right? Yeah. <laughs> if that worked, I wouldn't have need to buy the S. And then I walk out. Um, so I tuck that into my pocket and I walk to James Anderson's house. All right. I'm going to cry here pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> my eyes are just wide. <laughs> Maybe they're broken beyond repair. Well, I guess my job is done. Barrett, if you want to go back down there, you just say the word and we'll go. But I think it may be more prudent to push forward. When I go back down there, I will. It will be for revenge and not to save anyone. Mm-hmm.